Well, hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal, and I promised Jody I would show her how I make my no knead sourdough. So the first thing I do, of course, for those of you who don't know how to make sourdough, it's really simple. You just take some flour and you add in a little bit of water and then you mix it up. Now the idea is to make sure all the flour is hydrated, you know, you don't want dry bits of flour in there, so that's why I like to use a fork, and as you can see, I use the fork backwards and forwards this way, so I can break up any, and there we go. Now that was really difficult, right? Then you put a loose fitting lid on it, and then tomorrow... You take out half of this, and I'm going to show you what I do, and then you add, do exactly the same thing again. You take another spoon and you put it in there, a little bit more water, and you mix it all up. And you keep doing that for about two weeks, actually about a week. And after about a week, it's going to look like this. Can you see all the bubbles and things in there? That's your sourdough. So every day... That's what I do. I take half of that out and then I add in and I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, just so happens I want to make bread today anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the sourdough out. Isn't that beautiful? It's really great exactly what I need. And I'm going to feed that as well in a minute. But just to let you know, I also have here another sourdough, and this I make out of whole wheat, uh, and I add in some extra quinoa and a little bit of rye flour. But it's made exactly the same way as I showed you. And so that's also going to go in there. And, and when I take a little bit out every day, I put it into here. And when it's about this full, I use it to make the next loaf of bread. So all that's coming out. Now, the reason most people don't like dealing with bread is it's, it's sticky and it's nasty. But I think everybody will agree there's nothing better than homemade bread. Now you can see that that is a pretty yucky looking mess. Now all I'm going to do, and it's really simple, is I'm going to add a little bit of regular flour to it. And I know you're saying how much, so well, let me tell you how much. <laughs> and this is just regular everyday flour, um, nothing special. And I just mix it in with a fork. The nice thing about mixing it with a fork is you can keep cutting into it. If you like, you become a human dough making machine. It's looking pretty good. I'm just going to add a little bit extra. I'm going to add a little bit of extra rye flour in there.
little bit of extra hold it and it's at this point that I will add some salt and um, I use stevia rather than sugar so sprinkle some of that in And, you know, if you want to, you can add some honey, maybe some rolled oats, anything you like. And then I just continue to mix it up. Now, you can probably see this is not what you call difficult. Now, I keep mixing until I've used up all that loose flour. And this is just the first stage and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it to rest I'm just covering it with some press and seal because we want it to not dry out so there this will keep it moist and I'm going to leave this for a couple of hours well, here we are, and it's two hours later, and I thought I'd show you what it looks like. It's grown, which is exactly what we want it to do. Now, this time, I'm taking two forks, and what I'm going to do is to just give you one word to remember what bread needs to do is to stretch. So I'm just going to go in like this and stretch it. Now you see it falls apart, which means it's not strong enough yet, but that's a good thing. And I'm just going to turn it over itself like that. So I'm just going to dig in underneath there. This saves you having to do a whole lot of kneading. You don't need to knead. Okay, and you see that I'm just turning it over itself. Now I normally do this about eight times, I would think. See that fell apart, it's not strong yet. So that sort of gets it going. Please notice, no messy hands, no messy anything. And that's all that I do. And then I cover it and leave it for another hour. Perfectly clean hands, no strength required. For those of you with arthritis, this works really well. Or maybe other reasons why you can't uh, have a lot of strength in your hands. So we're just going to let it do exactly the same thing again. Well, here we are another hour later, and as you can see, it's done its thing again. So we're just going to stretch it another time. As you can probably see, it is holding the stretch a lot better now, which is what we want. Just takes time. See how good that's looking down there?
great. So now I'm just going to leave it for another hour and then I'm going to show you the next step. But that's looking really good. I'm very happy with it. Well, here we are again, and this is after only about just over half an hour, I think. So you can see it's doing really nicely. So I'm going to sprinkle some whole wheat flour on my board, because what we're going to do is we're going to seriously stretch it now. As you can see, it's still looking pretty sticky, but if you look at it, it's not that bad sticking very much at all to my spatula okay which is good just what we want so what i'm going to do is sprinkle a little flour on top and this is where it gets to be fun because i'm going to treat it like pastry for a while Remember, what we're looking for is to stretch the dough. Oh, by the way, <laughs> and that's rolling beautifully. So, once I've got it all rolled like that, I'm going to. Roll it one more time. And now that I've got it like this, we're going. what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on the sides and then push in at the bottom. We're creating stretch on the top there, down on the sides and underneath. A ah, little bit of flour there. So down and under, down and under. And that is looking pretty. So now I'm just going to roll it a bit more. And just with wet hands, I'm just going to seal this a little bit. There we have it. Now the way that I do this, and it's a personal thing, I now put it back in a bowl. Yeah, every time you think you've got everything ready, you don't. Quite normal. All right, so what I'm going to do is just put a little of olive oil into the bowl. Like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to put my dough in there, pop it in like that, and then I'm going to cover it.
and what I do is I leave it in the fridge overnight. So this will be tomorrow's bread. Okay. Now this far, <laughs> waste not, want not. I put back into the sourdough. That. And then I will mix that up in a moment. Well, hi everybody, this is Dim Amasar back again, and this is the bread that we put in the fridge overnight. Isn't that beautiful? No kneading. Remember that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spritz this bread pan. I've got the oven on at um, 450. So I'm just oil in the pan. I'm going to put some whole wheat flour in here. And just coat the sides. And remember, I'm not going to waste this flour. <laughs> I'm just going to use it as the flour for my whole grain sourdough starter for the day. There we go. Put a little bit of water in. And then I'm going to mix that up and use it for today. Oops. Remember what you're looking to do is just to make sure that your starter hydrates the incoming flour. So that's what I'm doing right there. <coughs> okay, so it's all mixed in. Loose lid, remember, loose lid. If the lid's on too tight, the gases can't escape. And if those of you wondering how is my sourdough doing from yesterday, there we go. I haven't fed it yet, I'll fed, feed it after this. Now, what I want to, again, loose lid, people, remember this, it needs to be loose so the gases can escape. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and move <laughs> this dough into here so without sort of dropping it too much. So, we know it needs to be a bit more of this shape. Okay. When I say dropping it too much, you know, it's got a lot of natural bubble in it right now. So I'm going to cover it, but first, pair of scissors. Now, you need to make these in either a slice or um, some sort of indentation like that so that as the bread starts to rise in the oven it has somewhere for the air to escape otherwise you'll have it bursting out in places that you don't want so what I've done is I've created some air release places for it all right so this now will stay for another half hour while the oven heats up and gets good and hot and then we're going to put it in to cook. By the way, I've put a ramekin, let me just show you here. Just get it move the I've put a ramekin into the oven with some hot water and that will create steam for um, the bread as it cooks. So now There it is, and we're going to pop it into the oven. Now the steam helps give it a, a crisp crust. That's difficult to see. So it's at 450, and I'm going to cook it for 35 minutes. And we'll be back later. Well, 
Well, there we have it out of the oven. And there we have it. Beautiful brown multi grain bread without any kneading at all. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it just blows me away. So simple. And it's going to taste so good. Enjoy.